sunshine. Long, white, sandy beaches and turquoise waters. The Seychelles keep perfecting their image as heaven on earth, or Garden of Eden, as the very first explorers on the route to the Indies described them. Situated just below the equator, these granite islands, the oldest on the planet, were only colonized in the 18th century, thus preserving a rich natural environment which has become the main reason for trips to this country. The Seychelles have the recent history of a mixed race population, evidence of the melting pot of colonizers from France and England and merchants and slaves from Africa, India and China. In the Seychelles archipelago, there are still a few islands that remain deserted. 17th century pirates' lairs, or former coconut plantations that man has abandoned to time. In 1999, the government of the Seychelles decided to save one of these sleepy islands and revive it to its former natural state. Sold to a South African group specializing in ecological lodges, North Island, one of the 115 of the Seychelles, in just a few years has become the most luxurious destination for ecotourism in the whole of the Indian Ocean. When we landed on this island, you know, we had this fantastic feeling, this barefoot feeling, and um, we knew that this, this is going to be something different. When we arrived here, it was, there was just a, just a shed there, and from the shed onwards, it's just forests. You know, we tried to work our way, way through the forest with bangers, and we were bitten by, um, by wasps, we were stung by wasps. And there was a huge pig on the island, you know, a huge pig that was chasing us around, and there was cattle on the island. It took over three years for Beer, the South African project manager, to bring this project, designed by two Italian architects, to fruition. On this island, Nature is everywhere. The idea is to take advantage of the resources here to build a whole village of wood and rough stone. Today, 11 primitive looking villas integrate effortlessly into the natural environment, taking on the form of the rocks and hiding away in the forest of takamaka trees. If you just look at, um, at the whole concept, you know, and it's not easy to find something like this in the world where you've got uh, both you rehabilitating the island back to its um, um, natural state, and, and secondly, you've, you've got a villa that's, I think, quite, uh, quite unique. And, um, and as I said, you know, the feeling that you get here, you've got such a nice feeling on North Island. To be able to buy this island from the Seychelles government, the owners of the lodge committed themselves to restoring the flora and fauna by calling on the help of scientists. Gerard Rocamora is an ornithologist and has worked for four years on the restoration of the island's ecosystem. North Island is an island which has suffered a lot of damage over the years, since a large part of the plateau and hills were converted into coconut plantations. 
thereby removing the original vegetation. It was infested by rats, there were cats, cattle, and all types of animals, which have gradually been eliminated, and that has been a huge change. Slowly, we are seeing species become more abundant again. Firstly, we look at the feet, wings, and then the head. You have to pamper them a bit. They are very rare. They were in the category of critically endangered, and we've brought them into the category of endangered, thanks to the different reintroductions we carried out 18 months ago on several islands, including North Island. Thanks. The white eye is the symbol of all the work that Gerard and his NGO, the Island Conservation Society, have done. Before reintroducing this extremely rare bird onto North Island, there were only 300 individuals of this species left in the world. It's better to put the other one on, light blue, for example. If you are asking me whether tourism on a limited scale is compatible with this type of work, I would say yes. I would even go so far as to say that this work couldn't exist without tourism. If you don't have economic activity as a foundation that allows you to have a team on the island carrying out the rehabilitation of vegetation, the support of fauna, working in partnership with the big players like us, the NGOs, and different experts, there needs to be this economic activity as a foundation for it all. Thanks to the work of Gerard and other naturalists, North Island is slowly being transformed into a Noah's Ark, which fortunate visitors frequent in search of their little piece of heaven. Lodge employs a full-time member of staff who takes care of the environment, Linda, a Belgian biologist who is mainly responsible for the reintroduction and protection of fauna, such as the hawksbill turtle. A turtle hunted by man for its tortoise-like shell and which lays its eggs during the day on the beaches of North Island. It is a hawksbill turtle, which comes to lay its eggs from September until January each year. It is an endangered species, so that's why we are so careful not to disturb the female, because each time she lays between 150 and 200 eggs, and then she doesn't return for two or three years. Here we have a very special moment, a female that I won't see again until 2010 or even 2011. A few hours' journey from North Island is Cousin. Near the main islands, it was the first island of the Seychelles to be classified as a nature reserve in 1968. A huge ecological rehabilitation program has allowed an area to be created which is entirely dedicated to wildlife. Welcome to the island of Cousin. It is a special reserve. Even though you are on holiday, we have a few rules for you. For example, cigarettes are completely prohibited on the island. We have lots of shells on the ground. You can look and admire, but please, do not pick them up, because they are very important for the ecosystem of the island. You will have a guide with you, so please always stay with the group and follow your guide's instructions. The island of Cousin is made up of one kilometre squared of dense forest that is home to all kinds of species of birds terns, frigate birds and tropic birds, but especially very rare birds like the magpie robin and the Seychelles warbler. The guided tour is with Simeon Giovanni, the caretaker of Cousin. Cousin has the largest diversity of lizards per hectare. We are going to see two main species, 
and you're also going to have the chance to see birds from very close up, from about a meter away. They are not shy, they are used to it. You can see, it's just there, look. This species of bird is known as the Seychelles magpie robin. It is a beautiful bird. It sings beautiful melodies, mostly when it's brooding. Especially the male, he flies up into the treetops and sings in broad daylight. It is a way to attract the female. Et ça, c'est une façon pour attaquer la femelle. There is a certain time of the week that we monitor certain species of land birds and seabirds. Uh, we do a tour of the island to note down their activity, if they are young and doing well. In the water we check on the coral, the fish, certain species of fish, because the reserve covers the sea too. The coral reefs are protected. Whilst the Seychelles archipelago attracts a large number of tourists, certain islands, such as the Aldebra Atoll, are reserved more for scientists. The largest island in the Seychelles is nestled far away from the shipping routes, near the African coast. It takes more than three days to reach Aldebra on the Indian Ocean Explorer, which carries a team of scientists coming to study one of the last natural treasures of our planet. The largest coral atoll in the world Aldebra has existed autonomously since the last rise in water levels 125,000 years ago. It is very much like the image of the world before man, an ecosystem which is evidence of an era long gone. The inhospitable environment of this atoll has protected it at all times from the exploitation by man of its resources, protecting the plants, reptiles and rare birds often unique in the world, like the rail, one of the last surviving flightless birds in the whole of the Indian Ocean. Aldebra is a huge lagoon of about 20,000 hectares, surrounded by four main islands that are Grand Terre, Malabar, Ptolemy and Picard. For thousands of years, the waves have eroded the coral reefs, forming over time strange clusters in the shape of mushrooms. At the Sank Kars camp, Steve Goodman comes to set traps to capture bats. As a biologist, he takes a census of the different species to find out the origin of these animals and their distribution in the Indian Ocean. For him, the dream of Aldebra is a reality. It is the second time he has come to work on this atoll. The bats don't see these bits of fishing wire. They fly through, stop, and fall into the bag and can't escape. Aldebra is the dream of many scientists. We can read and look at all these great books with colour photographs, etc., showing the ecosystem of Aldebra. 
which is fantastic. But there are very few people who can really set foot on Aldebra. It's extremely well protected, and it's complicated to get a permit. On the logistical and financial side of things, it is difficult. I think for many scientists, Aldebra is a dream ecosystem. When you arrive here, it, it takes your breath away, because the birds, plants and insects aren't in any way threatened by man, so they don't run away. They fear nothing. There is no hunting or human predation. Nature is left to its own devices. It's actually a pretty accurate view of what the world would be like without man. And it's always interesting to realize that just because we are six to seven billion in number, it doesn't mean we are masters of the world. As it turns out, we are, but we are masters that are a long way from being enlightened. I'm lucky to be able to study insects. On Aldabra, we are talking about 1,000 different species of insect on just one island. The group of islands of this atoll 1,000 different species, probably at least 25% of which are endemic, meaning that 25% of these 1,000 species can only be observed on Aldabra. We are in a real bubble. In the small hours, Steve's first catch is the Aldabra fruit bat, one of the rare mammals that came from Madagascar thousands of years ago. As a vegetarian, this bat spends its days hanging in the trees. To have the privilege of living in this primitive, natural environment, the rangers stay a minimum of one whole year on the atoll, far away from everything. For me, it's a dream that's come true, because very few people from the Seychelles actually make it out here. There are 85,000 people living in the Seychelles, but only 10,000 have been here. So those that have made it this far are very lucky. <laughs> it's truly incredible being here. There's everything, nature, fish, the birds, everything. In the north of Aldebra, Malabar is home to the second largest colony of frigate birds in the world, a true marine sanctuary and a special breeding site for terns and red-footed boobies. Gerard Rocamora patiently observes this colony. In addition to his work on North Island, he comes to Aldebra to identify and record the unique fauna of this natural environment that is completely dominated by water. We have two species of frigate bird, the greater frigate bird and the lesser frigate bird. In total, there are about 10,000 couples which are spread out over the atoll and which nest mostly in the mangroves. The exceptional aspect of Aldabra is its completely untouched nature and the total, or almost total, absence of human activity. There are very few islands on this planet that are free from the activity of man. There's also the fact that it has known how to protect species that have disappeared elsewhere. On this planet, we are lucky to have these witnesses of ancient times on Earth that have managed to survive until our times.